Today, let's discuss the flammability diagram. A flammability diagram shows the flammability range in mixture of fuel, oxygen and inert gas. It is known that for any fire to start, it requires minimum three components, that is air, fuel and source of heat. In the cargo tanks of vessels, cargo can play the role of fuel and complete one side of the triangle. Any spark or heat from adjacent compartment or even atmospheric heat can act as source of heat in tanks. The atmospheric air contains 21% oxygen, provides sufficient oxygen for fire triangle to complete and a fire hazard take place. Removing any one side of the triangle will be an effective step to prevent fire hazard on board. Inert gas which inerts the atmosphere of tanks by keeping the oxygen content to a minimum breaks the fry triangle. To study any tank atmosphere in ship, flammability diagram serves as an important tool. Let's have a look at it. On the x-axis, we have the oxygen content in terms of person by volume and on the y-axis, we have the hydrocarbon gas content in terms of person by volume. As you can see on the y-axis, the hydrocarbon gas extends from 0% to 15% by volume. And on the x-axis, the oxygen content extends from 0% to 21% by volume. Let us take the point where oxygen content is 21% as point A. Let us consider a cargo tank. Now if we introduce hydrocarbon gas into the tank, the concentration of air that is oxygen decreases, assuming the tank had fresh air initially. The same can be shown on the graph as the line AB. As hydrocarbon gas is introduced its concentration increases, thus the line extends upwards. But at the same time, due to introduction of hydrocarbon, the oxygen content decreases, thus the line AB is a slant line. As you can see, the line AB is a slant because the concentration of oxygen reduces with introduction of hydrocarbon. Any hydrocarbon will only burn if the concentration lies within the well-defined lower and upper limits determined experimentally. This is called the flammability limits or explosive limits. The upper limit is called UFL or upper flammability limit which is the hydrocarbon concentration above which there is insufficient air to support combustion. The lower limit is called lower flammability limit which is the hydrocarbon concentration below which there is insufficient concentration of hydrocarbon to support combustion. Now we represent the UFL as point D on the line AB and the LFL as point C on the line AB. Now we introduce inert gas to the tank that is we carry out inerting. As the inert gas content increases, the flammable mixture changes. The UFL and LFL narrows down to converge at a point F when inert gas is added. At point F, the oxygen level is 11% by volume. The area under the curve indicates the flammable mixture. Now our tank has a mixture of air, hydrocarbon and inert gas. This is indicated on the graph at point E. Now, as you would remember, the process of man entry begins with inerting, followed by purging, and then gas freeing. If we introduce air after inerting, that is, if air is introduced from point E itself, it passes through the flammable mixture, therefore possessing a fire hazard. To tackle this, we need to purge the tank with inert gas. By doing this, we reduce the oxygen content as well as the hydrocarbon content. Now after purging, we reach a point where the oxygen content is about 3% and the hydrocarbon content is about 5% by volume. Let us name this point as M. If we stop purging at any point between E and M and start gas freeing from the point, then it passes through the flammable mixture. Therefore, we have a line GA called critical dilution limit. The line GA passes by just stretching the flammable range portion of the diagram. Thus, critical dilution limit is the minimum amount of purging required 
to ensure that the mixture does not fall in the flammable range while diluting with air. Therefore, it is advised to purge till the mixture reaches a point H. From H, if the mixture is diluted with air of 21% oxygen, it will follow the line HA which does not pass through the flammable range. Hence, the safe condition is maintained throughout the process. From the above, it is well understood that the use of inert gas doesn't guarantee the safe environment of tank during tank operations until inert gas present is above the critical limit of the atmosphere.